Hey everyone, I'm Ultima456, you're the Ultimates, and welcome to episode 69, Giggity, of Let's Platinum Danganronpa 1, 2, Reload. Alright, let's uh, examine this key here on the table. There's something on the table. It's a woodblock decoration. What? What's that? What purpose does it serve? I think it's probably a key? The lockers at those really traditional public bathhouses use them for their lockers. <laughs> okay. Uh, lockers and lockers. I wouldn't know. I've never gone to a public bathhouse. That doesn't really surprise me. It's hard to picture Byakia doing something it's like that. Certainly possible. But if it is a key, I think I might know what it unlocks. Really? Hmm. What? Unless I'm mistaken, I'm pretty sure I saw something in the dojo that this might go to. The dojo? Woodblock key has been added to the truth bullet section of your handbook. By the way, this case is masterfully done. Like, when we get to the end, it's really, really cool. Uh, okay, let's speak to Byakuya first. What? You wanted to come here, right? So what is it you're looking for? Nothing in particular. I just thought we might find some kind of clue here. A clue that might help us understand Kyoko. Come on. You can't be serious. That's why you made me take time out of my search to come here? Sorry. <laughs> Regardless, if you plan on poking around at random, you're doomed no matter how much time you take. Surely you have something more concrete, something to give us some sort of direction here? More concrete. Ah, oh, I know. Earlier, Kyoko gave me something. Huh? What's it's this? True. Consider it a symbol of my determination. Don't open it yet. Only open it if something ever happens to me. I'm sure I have it here somewhere. Found it. Hmm. What's in that envelope? Kyoko gave it to me. She said if something ever happened, I should open it. Hmm. Well, something has certainly happened, so open it. Oh, okay. I opened the envelope and looked inside. Inside was a single piece of paper. Under the sheets. I just want to quickly point out, I'm, I haven't replayed the sixth chapter yet, so my memory of it is like from many years ago. Does the fact that it's printed and not written mean anything? I can't remember. <laughs> I wonder if that comes up. Anyway, it's just something that I know. Don't answer that, that's rhetorical, but I'm just saying. I wonder if that matters. I never noticed about that. Because when you think about, like, for example, the... the... what's it call it? Um, the handwriting from Hero uh, in one of the previous chapters, um, that was definitely written. This is definitely typed. What? That's all that was in there? Yeah, it looks like it. Under the sheets. What could it be? Well, I wonder what it could be. <laughs> but could something be hidden under the bed sheets? Part of me didn't expect to find anything, but as I lifted up the sheets... What's this? I found a crumpled up piece of paper. Class number 78. Student registry. Mukuro Ikusaba. I see. It appears to be Mukuro Ikusaba's profile. Yeah, it looks like it. That's probably the other thing Kyoko stole when she snuck into the headmaster's room along with the key. God, you're so annoying. Fine, I'll tell you. It was a key and bleep, that's it. So probably the word uh, letter or report or something like that could be substituted for that blank. This must be the blank that Monokuma was talking about. Kyoko said a death without mealing, uh, sorry, without mealing. Kyoko said a death without meaning was unappealing, and this is what she left behind. I don't have time for your sentiment, sentimental indulgences. Hurry up and finish your search. Uh, okay. I made an effort to pull myself together, then looked down at the profile sheet. Name, Mukuro Ikusaba. Sex, female. The ultimate soldier. Although small for her age, she was a military specialist trained in every weapon type imaginable. She showed an interest in the military from childhood and soon found herself completely absorbed in it. In elementary school, she won a survival game uh, tournament and began writing for military magazines. Just before entering middle school, while she and her family were on vacation in Europe, she disappeared. The story of a young Japanese girl being kidnapped quickly took over Japanese media outlets. An intense international investigation turned up no information and she was never found. However, she reappeared in Japan three years later, alone and completely un unannounced. She revealed that she had joined a mercenary group known as Fenrir for those three years. She insisted that she hadn't been kidnapped, that she'd received battle training of her own volition. However, she never revealed why she decided to return home when she did. 
Got a lot of she's in there. Mukuro's profile has been added to the truth bullet section of your handbook. The ultimate soldier, a mercenary group. This doesn't feel real. The world I grew up in, it's like a completely different dimension. It's like one's non-fiction and the other is sci-fi. There's no way to even compare the two. That's how different this is. That was how I saw things as just an ordinary person. But then... I see. I never imagined I would hear the name Fenrir in a place like this. Huh? You recognize it? Naturally. The Fenrir Mercenary Corps is a collection of battle-crazed warmongers. But they do have their uses, and they always get the job done. That's worth remembering. This is all part of a world totally removed from the one I live in. Hmm. I have to say, I'm intrigued. Every rumor I've heard says that Fenrir has already... Whoa! I feel like our hero is becoming a bit player, and a bit player is becoming our hero. Uh, it's you. Hmm, what have you got in your pretty little hand there? Uh oh, you found her profile. So, so what if we did? Don't freak out on me. I'm not gonna hold it against you or, or anything. And in case you're wondering, I don't hold it against Kyoko either, even though she stole it and hid it. After all, there's no rule against stealing, is there? But who I can't forgive is Miss Ogami, who broke the rules and busted into the headmaster's room. Maybe I'll drag her corpse out here and slice it up and devour it. Bears are omnivorous, you know. What? Are rule violations really so unforgivable? You're quite adamant about those regulations of yours. Of course I am. A proper school life is built on the dedication to organization and order. Which is why even I, as the school headmaster, have to follow the regulations myself. Oh, so you're saying you have to follow your own rules as well? Of course! Absolutely! I can't have you complaining about how unfair it all is, now can I? In fact, on the subject of fairness, would you like to know something interesting? Interesting? <laughs> It's about the one writing all the rules. They're actually... one of the participants in this killing game. I don't think I ever actually told you how many participants there actually were, did I? Hmm. I was thinking I should probably clarify that. Hey, um... When you all first got together in the main hallway... Oh, uh, sorry, in the main hall, way back when, there were 15 people there, right? I think that first meeting may have led to a little misunderstanding among you all. Uh, misunderstanding? Are you saying... In other words... That's right, there weren't actually 15 of you. Yes, indeed! The total number of students taking part in this killing game was actually 16! 16? Then... Mukuro Ikusaba. For like the seventh the time. Student. Lying hidden somewhere in this school. Or the 16th time. <laughs> the one they call the ultimate despair. Watch out for her. The 16th student. Mukuro Ikusawa. She's part of this school life. So the one making all the regulations is... Why? Why? Huh? Hmm? Did you say something? <laughs> Why are you telling us this? Hmm. Oh, well, because... <laughs> Like I told you, this killing game is desperately popular. You wouldn't believe the ratings. And since we've got so many viewers now, I wanted to make sure everyone was on the same page. I don't want to wake up to a hurricane of complaints and hate mail, you know? Yes, indeed. Makes sense? Well, now. Okay, that's all you get for now. Oh, actually, I do have some revenge to get, so I have an extra bonus for you. Revenge? I want to get back at that sneaky Miss Kirigiri, so I'm going to share a little secret with ya. Seriously? Hey, um... You know how she wears those stupid gloves day in, day out, all the time? Well, don't tell anyone I told you, but... <laughs> she wears them to cover up a bunch of hideous scars that she doesn't want anyone to see. What? <laughs> <laughs> okay, now that's all you get. Monokuma's account has been added to the truth bullet section of your handbook. Kyoko wears those gloves to cover up a bunch of scars? Wait, so on the back of her hand... The tattoo... Wait, but no. Monokuma specifically said there were scars, right? 
But that's why Kyoko wears those gloves to hide the scars, which means those fake nails on the corpse. Hmm. Are you thinking about Kyoko again? Huh? What? Forget about her. What matters right now is uncovering Monokuma's trap. His trap? Such ignorance. God must have really hated you to make you so dull. Hmm. Don't you remember what Monokuma just told us? He said there were 16, 16 students, right? Which means Mukuro was a student That's here. Right. Obviously, Monokuma was trying to tell us that Mukuro is the one creating the rules to the game. But why would he tell us that? And why now? He said he wanted to make things clear so there wouldn't be any complaints later. But the mere fact that he said that proves that Mukuro is connected to this case. That's why Monokuma revealed the existence of a 16th student. He needs to make our investigation fair. Mukuro is related to the case? It's certainly possible. Perhaps she's the one who killed Kyoko? What? Hmm. That would explain why we'd ha we would have to have a class trial, wouldn't it? If she's a student and she killed someone, that would make her part of the school killing game. Mukuro is the killer? She killed Kyoko? Hmm. Anyone should be able to come to that conclusion, don't you think? In fact, that's exactly what I thought when the investigation first began. What? But based on what Monokuma just told us, I've changed my mind. It's all clear now. Mukuro Ikusaba isn't the culprit. Huh? What makes you say that? We thought Mukuro, the ultimate despair, was the mastermind's true identity. But if that's true, Monokuma's behavior makes no sense. Why would the mastermind go out of their way to reveal themselves to us? That's a good so point. In other words... Mukuro giving us information that would raise questions about her wouldn't be bold, to say the least. It makes more sense then to assume that Mukuro isn't the culprit. So that's the trap. They want us to suspect Mukuro and come to the wrong conclusion. Hmm. That's what makes sense to me. The way you say it definitely does seem possible, but if that's really true, if Mukuro isn't the killer, then who is? Well then, I believe our work here is finished. Let's move on. I'm sure there are other places in need of investigation. I should find out if that key and dojo really are connected. Let's go. Well, are you coming? Okay, so now we're gonna go straight to the dojo. Hopefully I've timed this properly. Should it, even if it goes to 20 minutes, that's good. Uh, let's just talk to him real quick. Hmm. Hurry up and check the locker. That's what we're here for after all. All right, so locker number six. There are wooden lockers here. They use woodblock keys, just like at those super traditional bath, public bathhouses. It looks like the key we found in Kyoko's room really does go to one of these lockers. I see. Makoto, do you see the locker farthest to the right? Very strange. That's the only one that doesn't have a key in it at the moment. You understand what that means, right? I should probably use the key we found on that locker, right? That's right. Well, just try it. Oh, okay. I took out the woodblock key and inserted it into the locker's metal lock, and... Click. The locker eagerly accepted the key, and it opened. There are... arrows in here. It looks like... 10 arrows in total. Hmm. They look like they're made of titanium, which means they're quite strong despite how thin they are. Of course, without a bow, they're nothing but strong little sticks. Strong sticks? Titanium arrows has been added to the truth bullet section of your handbook. Oh, there's something else inside the locker. It's a wadded up ball of duct tape. I wonder what this was used for. Is that a blood stain? If it is, that means it surely must be related to the case. This duct tape is related to the case somehow. But how could it possibly be involved? Cool. Bloody duct tape has been added to the truthful section of your handbook. I think that's all the locker has to offer for now. Alright, almost done. Something wrong? It's very odd, don't you think? The locker was hiding items that were clearly related to the case. But how did the key to the locker wind up in the victim's room? Or perhaps... Yakuya? Hmm. Forget it. Come on, we need to continue on to the next location. Huh? What next what? location? There's still something we need to look into. We need to do more research on Fenrir. Fenrir? You mean the mercenary group that Mikuro was a part of. But how are we supposed to find out about that? Isn't it obvious? Where in the school would you go to do research on something? Research. Are you talking about the archive? That's right, the archive has all kinds of info that the general public doesn't have access to. Let's go. We only have so much time before the trial begins. Let's hurry. Alright, this will be the last thing and then we're pretty much ready to go, so... 
Hopefully I can get through this in time. Hmm. I believe there was a file related to Fenrir somewhere over here. The Akio seemed to know the archive like the back of his hand and went straight to the shelf, straight to a shelf in the back. Hmm. Ah, here we go. He quickly returned with a file in hand. Okay, quickly click on him. I see. Take a look at this. Um, I have no idea what it says. What language is this? Hmm. How did you make it all the way to high school without learning a single word of French? Um, I'm pretty sure most high schoolers can't speak French. <laughs> well, whatever. I'll read it for you, but I expect you to repay your debt a hundred times over. A hundred times? Isn't that kind of extreme? <laughs> Fenrir is an elite fighting unit based out of the Middle East. Unlike military contractors, they are a fierce group of soldiers who engage in direct combat. They claim that a single member is equivalent to an entire company of regular soldiers. Just like Fenrir, the Wolf of Ragnarok, their mere pre presence is enough to strike fear into any enemy. They have been involved in countless military battles and operations, most of which are highly classified. However, some time ago, they completely ceased all activity. At present, their continued existence cannot be confirmed. There are unconfirmed reports that the key members of the group were all neutralized. Rumors indicate that they rumors indicate they were killed to keep them from revealing the many state secrets they'd acquired. Some, however, believe there was mounting internal tension within the group, and they simply imploded. What? What is it? This all just sounds like some kind of alternate reality. Well, it isn't. This is our reality, the only reality. These people are part of our world. Their battlefields aren't much different from our lives here. An unpredictable, unimaginable world. That's what makes it all so exciting. Exciting definitely isn't the word I would use. So, did anything jump out at you? This may be your last opportunity to learn about Fenrir. Now that you mention it, the report said something about where the name Fenrir comes from, right? <laughs> That's right. It said Fenrir is the Wolf of Ragnarok. Speaking of which, would you like to know something interesting related to that? To show that they're a member of the team, each soldier that joins the squad would get a tattoo representing Fenrir somewhere on their body. What? They got a tattoo of Fenrir? Could that mean... Mukuro Ikusaba's profile has been updated in the truth bullet section of your handbook. Alright, good, made it. Ding dong bing bong. Dingity dong, bingity bong. Silent, and yet it constantly assaults us. Organisms, the earth, natural phenomena. It damages us little by little until the end. You should really think about that. Anyway, it's time to begin the class trial. So, please meet up in the usual spot. <laughs> See you later. Hmm. Then the time has come. All we can do now is try to un uh, all we can do now is try to uncover the truth during the class trial. It would seem that way. Let's go. All right, I'm going to quickly go for this because there's still a teensy bit left just before we start the class trial, so I'm going to try and get through it quickly. Whoa, Byakuya and Makoto showed up together. Where the heck have you two been? You just disappeared without a word. We were investigating, of course. How could you not figure that out by this point? M Makoto is ranked high enough for you guys to go off t together. Just the two of you. What, are you jealous? Or are you making up some kind of creepy fantasy for yourself? What? Stop talking and brace yourselves. He'll be here any second. Any second? He could show up at any time. When I imagined what was about to happen, I immediately tensed up and prepared myself. But... We stood there for, full f for five full minutes waiting for something weird to happen. And then five minutes became ten. Why? What's going on here? Why hasn't Monokuma shown up yet? Could it be? Maybe he died again? What should we do? Should we keep waiting here, or...? Or what? Jesus! Did I scare you? Come on. I demand an explanation. Why did you waste my time and make me wait like that? Hmm? What? I made you wait? You got it all backwards. You're the ones making me wait. Huh? In other words... I'm waiting for everyone to arrive. We can't start till everyone's here now, can we? What are you t talking about? Everyone is here. We've all been waiting for you. <laughs> Sorry, but you're wrong. <laughs> but I've been waiting 10 minutes now, so it's okay if I punish the one making us all wait, right? 
If we all agree it's a violation, I'll arrange a punishment right now. If it's me you're waiting for, I'm here. When we heard that voice, we all spun around to look. Hey. I'm here, and no rule's been broken. Kyoko. Uh. Kyoko, you're still alive. Uh. No, that's a g g g ghost. Uh. Stop t talking. Hmm. If you want to fight, do it at the class trial. You need to save some of the fun for later, right? What? But is it okay that there is no particular penalty for being late? Is that right? I made it here just fine. What school regulation did I violate? Am I wrong? Yeah. You're so selfish, so spoiled. You're right, there's no penalty, officially. But I bet you'll be sorry later. Shing. No, I'll make sure you're sorry later. <laughs> anyway, hustle your butts onto the elevator. I'll be just one step ahead of you. When Monokuma was gone, we all rushed up to Kyoko. Kyoko! Ah. So you really didn't die? Indeed. Of course I didn't die. <laughs> Thank god, I'm so glad you're okay. Perhaps, but that's not necessarily a good thing for us. Huh? Ah. He's right, now we've got to deal with a g, -g ghost yeah. I told you, stop t talking. Let's go. Come on, let's just go. Whatever we need to discuss, we can do it during the trial. Without ever looking directly at Kyoko, Byakuya stepped into the elevator. Master, away from me! Uh, um... Good call. Who knows what might happen to us if we take too long. But... I'll be happy when this trial is all over. One after another, everyone piled into the elevator. But I... couldn't help myself. I had to talk to Kyoko before the trial started. Alright, I'm gonna quickly talk to her. It's gonna take another two minutes and then I'll end the episode. Listen, before we get started, I have to ask you. Where have you been this whole time? You used that key of yours to go somewhere, didn't you? Correct. So? I went to investigate the second floor of the dorm. So this is the one next to the dorms where it's next to the warehouse. It was locked. She used the key to go there. So she, yeah, she found out how to get up there. That's pretty cool. I went to investigate the second floor of the dorms. The second floor? That's right. There aren't any monitors or cameras there. So I was able to avoid Monokuma completely. Of course, I also missed his announcement because of that. Ooh. I had no idea body had been discovered. Then when did you find out? So... Just now I finished my search and came back down just in time to hear the class trial announcement. I took some time to go over the crime scene first. I can't go into a trial completely uninformed can I? So that's why you were late. However... I'm sorry I kept you all waiting but if you are on the second floor of the dorms then that's what the key you found goes to? Wrong. Actually, to be precise, not quite. In other words, I used Monokuma's secret tool, which can open any lock in the school. What? <laughs> Kyoko's account has been added to the truth bullet section of your handbook. Just a second. Hey, what are you two doing? Hurry up before we get in trouble with Monokuma. Makoto. We can go over all the details after we get through this trial, okay, Makoto? Right now, I just want to focus on surviving our current situation. Because this is probably the single most crucial moment so far for me. For her? That's a strange way to put it. Class trial is important for everyone, right? So why would you say it's a crucial moment for her? Goodbye. Well, if that's all. Seemingly unconcerned, Kyoko made her way to the elevator. I'm just overthinking what she said, right? Uh, now I wish I had kept going until 20 minutes last time. It would have made this just perfect. Oh well, that's how it goes. Um, Alright, so yep, we're about to start another class trial. This is going to be a fascinating one. Very, very, very cool. Things are about to happen. Okay, but for now, I do want to thank you all for watching episode 69 of Let's Platinum Danganronpa 1, 2, Reload. My name is Ultima456, you're the Ultimates, and I'll see you next time.